I've been seeing this number 5% out there for Boris. And in the last four or five days, $878 million when you throw Moustakas in there. 5% of that. Is baseball different than, than football and the NBA in terms of what agents get paid? Because I always thought it was 2 to 3% for these agents. Uh, 5%, Dan, is what I understand uh, Scott's commission to be. I, of course, have never been a good enough baseball player that I would have ever found that out on my own uh, by, by talking to Scott about representing my, uh, my baseball talent. Uh, but um, I have heard it many times that that, in fact, is what his commission is, 5%, which, uh, as you point out, works out to more than $40 million uh, for this week alone, which is a pretty extraordinary sum of money. So um, it, it really is uh, It's a good week for his, for his corporation, for his brand. Last winter, he had to really do a creative job of, of pushing Bryce Harper's free agency deep into the new year and, and of course, uh, eventually signing with the Philadelphia Phillies. But for, for these three players, Cole, Strasburg, Rendon, the market was much clearer. There were fewer evident flaws in these players. Um, overall, the, 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 the appetite to spend was greater among MLB teams at the moment. Um, there, there are more teams that, are, that believe that they're now moving out of a rebuild and, and more into a competitive phase. We've seen that, as you mentioned, with Mustaka signing with the Reds, Yasmani Grandal going to the White Sox. The Blue Jays are heavily involved in trying to sign Hunjin Ryu. So teams that were not really big factors in the market last winter are there right now and very present. So I think Scott benefited from having candidly better players and a market where there was a better willingness to spend. And Scott may have also made a bit of an adjustment on his own right uh, to see where the market was and, and, and reading things and, and realizing just how robust the market was at this early stage. And this, this is a great week for baseball, Dan. There was certainly last winter, the, the, the weight was not really good for anybody. It, it, was, it, it was tiresome for fans. Uh, I think the, the agents were frustrated. The teams were for a variety of reasons, uh, restrained in their activity. This is much more like the days of yore. And for me, as a young baseball reporter, I still remember hearing these great stories about 2000 and A-Rod and Manny Ramirez and Mike Hampton. And this is now our, our generational week of one of the biggest weeks ever in the history of, of off-season acquisitions. And it really, Dan, to me, very poignantly, sets the stage for the next decade is about to begin in a little more than two weeks. This, the, the events of this week for the teams that got these players and those who missed on these players, the coming 2020s will be defined in large part by what happened this week in San Diego. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.